Oh my god, this is so much more intense than any simulator I have ever driven. Oh, he's got a bit wide. Oh, I'm in the air. I took off. <laughs> oh no, he's hit the curb. Oh, I'm, oh my god, I'm, in, I'm dead. Hello, and welcome to Graz in Austria. It may look like I'm walking down a quiet residential street, but I'm actually arriving at the headquarters of one of the biggest engineering companies in motorsport you may never have heard of, AVL. AVL has over 11,000 employees and 45 different affiliates around the world. But unlike many other engineering companies, it's got an entire department dedicated to racing. AVL Racetech is one of the fastest growing departments with over 100 employees, and that's because the demand for innovation within racing is also growing, especially when it comes to sustainable innovations like batteries. So I've come down to their Battery Innovation Centre to see what's going on. Oh wow, I'm not sure what I was expecting, but this is definitely smaller and more intimate than other assembly lines I've visited. Probably the benefit of small batch production. I can see robots, I can see machines, I think I can see batteries, but I have no idea what's going on in here, so let's find someone who does. Hubert? Yeah. Hi, Hi. I'm Sam. Hi, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Uh, what's going on in this cage? Here, we are building batteries, so we're stacking cells to batteries. Okay, so I can see these big, I guess, robots moving around. What are they actually doing to stack a cell? Indeed, they are, they are just picking cells like this type, and then they stack it together to a bunch of cells, and then we go on and process them further. Okay, now, to me, that looks like a big AA battery, but I'm assuming it's a little more impressive and complex than that? Yeah, you're right. So, beside the size or the type of a cylindrical cell, it's the only thing that's in common with a AA battery. All the other things inside are completely different. Okay, is this the only cell that you'll use for...? So we, do, we use different type of cells. We have a, some of them here. So for example, we also can process pouch cells and we also have prismatic cells. Okay, can I, can I hold yeah. one? But yeah, be careful. thank you. They're all active. Okay, yeah. <laughs> now you've made me nervous. <laughs> so when would you use these different types of cells? So it depends on the application, what we use them for, and uh, then we select the right uh, cell to, to build the battery. Okay, so none of them are faster than the other. <laughs> They're different, so you have to know what you want to do with them, and then you do make the right choice. I'm still holding this nervously, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it down, I'll give it back to you. All right. <laughs> So once the stacking is complete, what's, what's next? Uh, after we have stacked the cells together, we need to fix them, so we glue them in, and then we have to weld them together. Okay, can we check that out? Of course. Okay, okay. I'll follow you. So Hubert's just told me something quite amazing about the gluing room, is it's temperature and humidity controlled. You can go from 18 to 23 degrees Celsius, or 30 to 60% humidity, and that's because glue behaves differently in different conditions. So why do you actually glue all the cells together? You have to glue the cells in because they can move a little and before you weld them, you have to fix them. Okay, and with all of these cells together like this, what happens if something goes wrong? Yeah, then you have to evacuate all the whole thing. You have to push that button back there. That button? Yes, that button. So I had to explain to the fire department that there wasn't actually an emergency. It's my bad. Uh, anyway, we've now moved on to the welding section you mentioned. So what are we doing here? Because for me, I still don't think the, the batteries necessarily look that familiar. Mm -hmm. So here, does it start to take a bit more shape? What we do here is that we come from a cell and we have to connect all the cells together. We have stacked them, we have glued them, but now we need an electric co connection. And this is what we do in here. We weld the bus bus. Okay, and that's happening inside this box? Right. Okay, with lasers or...? Yeah, that's a laser welding machine. Okay, and did it ever happen by hand or it's always been done with a machine? It's not happened by hand. You always need a machine. There are different types like laser welding, bonding, etc. But we do it with laser welding. Okay, because this sounds a little dangerous to me. Yeah. <laughs> welding Theref cells? Therefore, it's in a box. That makes sense. So people like me can't get yeah. involved again and make... And there's no evacuation button for you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Safe for you. Um, but I imagine that the batteries get quite big at this stage when you start welding the cells together. This looks quite small, so what do you do if you're trying to build a, a huge pack? We have a second laser welding station. Okay, I'll follow you, let's check that out. Okay, this really is much yeah. bigger. So what are you going to be putting together here? Is this for full electric vehicles? 
It's also for full electric vehicles, but also for larger bags for race car application, for example. So we can use the complete size of the table. Ah, okay, just because of the way that the, the pack will put together for a racing prototype? Yep, because it's always within modules, but sell to pack, and that can be done here for welding, and the other ones can be done over there. Okay, amazing. Okay, here we go. So those modules we just saw will very neatly be slotted into here. Then at the end, we're gonna have the battery control unit and some connectors. And they very neatly get housed like this. And this is for a supercar prototype. If this is for a race car prototype. We might expect to see this housing in carbon. Now, as I've made my way around this facility, I've learned that AVL have various safety practices in place in case anything should ever go wrong, as I found out <laughs> in the glue room. But what happens if something goes wrong with the battery pack once it's in a vehicle? Well, that's where AVL are working on another prototype. Let me introduce you to the Stingray. Now, the way this works is um, a marshal at the side of a track or maybe the fire services will come, pick this thing up. <clears throat> they'll probably be stronger than I am. <laughs> but they'll pick this thing up, positioning it in the vehicle, raise this element to the roof to secure it in place. They'll then attach water hose just here then compressed air will fill this chamber and shoot this needle into the battery pack and fill that battery pack with liquid, cooling it down. Now, interestingly, Formula E already have water inlets to their battery packs, and we may see that in future race cars, but for now, this is a very sensible and safe thing for the fire services, but also marshals to have at the side of a track should anything go wrong. Now, speaking of Formula E, I have heard that AVL have one of the best in the business racing simulators. So, I think it would be rude for me to be here and not give a battery pack a go in a virtual sense. Let's go check it out. Okay, this is not a computer game. Oh my God, this is so much more intense than any simulator I have ever driven. Now, of course, AVL, with all the work they do, have so much data plugged into this, so I'm having a real Formula E experience right now. <laughs> I genuinely think I could be a Formula E driver. This is amazing. The whole simulator is moving. This is so full on. I genuinely don't think I've had such a real experience in a simulator before. It always feels like you're playing a computer game, but this feels like I'm in real life. Well, I got to string a lap together here because I'm going to run out of time soon. This is the one I keep messing up. They go hard on the brakes, uphill, bit of a lock up. We can still make the apex. Oh, he's got a bit wide. Oh, I'm in the air. I took off. <laughs> oh, it's like an airplane, but I've survived in real life. I think I'll be dead right now. I've just noticed my lap times on the steering wheel. And I actually don't want to read them out. They're quite embarrassing. Someone told me the lap record was 110. Let's just say I am nowhere near that. Ah, no. Ah, ah. <laughs> Bit too extreme. That was me just finishing my lap, that's all. <laughs> I genuinely think I could be a Formula E driver. As you've seen, from design to prototype, manufacturer, simulation and on-track testing, AVL Race Tech provide a crucial service to race teams and series around the world, and not just for electric series either.